What's up guys? So today I want to talk about, do you need a trademark for Amazon? Do you need to get brand registered? Do you need brand approval? What's the difference between those two? What's error 5665 and how to get past that? How do you list on Amazon without listing generically, which will get you in trouble? It's impossible, pretty much impossible to change it in the future now. So if you do want to get brand registered later, want to get a trademark, get A plus content, it's impossible, right? So how do you set yourself up for the long run? That way you can have all the features and actually be branded on Amazon without being generic where everybody else can list on your product. Okay. There's been a lot of confusion with this the last few years, and it's just kind of cleared up of like what works, what doesn't, what's the best way to do this. Uh, you know, should you get a trademark? Should you not? And so I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step of what you should do here, what it all means. That way you can weigh the pros and cons, uh, which I'll go through here uh, as well. And uh, how to get through all this. So again, very important thing to make sure, you know, before you list your product on Amazon, before you even start your product. That way you can kind of plan ahead and make sure you know what's going on. All right. So hopping into my uh, notes here, I'm uh, using the iPad today. I'm uh, a fancy guy here. Uh, we're going to talk about the kind of the history uh, of how, of what's going on, on Amazon essentially. So how it kind of works. So before, you know, when I first started this probably uh, two to three years ago and beyond uh, to, you know, good start right there, Cam, uh, two years ago or so uh, plus you could just go on Amazon and type your brand name in uh, when you went to go list a product and they allowed you to do this. Okay. As long as it wasn't taken uh, on the trademark uh, office. So it already was done, already was brain registered. They let you put anything you want here and it would display on your listing. Okay. So about a year or so ago, uh, they gated this. So they, they, didn't allow you to put anything on um, Amazon. I'm not sure why they did this, but essentially they were trying to uh, keep bad people off. I'm guessing that's usually what they're trying to do when they do any of these things. They're trying to keep bad people off. And so what they did is they didn't allow you to put any brand name you wanted. They made you get brand approved or they made you have a trademark, okay? Or trademark, which is brand registry, okay? So how it first worked when it first came out, uh, pardon my handwriting here, you'll, you'll get used to it, I hope. Uh, so when they did this, uh, what they did is when you went to go make a listing on Amazon, you put in a random brand name in there and then they would say, nope, sorry, error code 5665, okay? And they essentially say, you need to be brand approved. Okay. Or you need to have a trademark already approved us for brand registry. Okay. This was super annoying. So what do we do? Cause we're all lazy. We didn't want to get a trademark. This was very expensive back then. I'll tell you kind of the history of that too, and, and what to do now to get that cheaper and, uh, and what I recommend to do, uh, as well. But what we all did is just in the brand name, we put generic or we put not available. And then also there's versions with like two or, or three behind it uh, because they kind of caught onto this and they were not allowing it. So you just added a number on the back and it was working and allowing it. But the issue with this is when you had generic or NA on here, anybody can list under your product. So it's a generic product, right? So there's, there's no branding to it. Uh, you know, there's nothing to it to, to stop hijackers to get on that listing. And it was a pain to change your brand name later on. Okay. So it was just a complete disgrace, everything like that. But the reason we did generic uh, and not available at that time is because, and I even suggested this too, because it was really murky of what was going on. Uh, so I suggested that uh, people did that as well, because I didn't think getting a trademark was financially worth it at that time. Okay. So let me go through that and what I recommend now for trademarks and how this all works now, because it's become a lot clearer and I'm giving you guys the steps to do this. So that way you don't have to go through brand changing uh, later, which you really can't do. You don't have to worry about hijackers with generic. You don't have to waste you know thousands of dollars with trademarks, everything like that. So to go through the trademark part side of things here, guys. So it used to be, so when I first got my trademark, essentially it took one to 1.5 years. It was actually, it was for one of them, it was one and a half years it took, the other one it took a year, but that was the one and a half was the first one that got done for us. And then later on we finished the one out uh, because we registered a little bit later. It took one and a half years to get trademarked and then get brain registered on Amazon, right? Because what happens is you get a lawyer or use trademarkia.com or whatever, and then you send it to the USPTO office. Well, there can be uh, rebuttals, there can be uh, follow-up letters you have to send them and it's the government, right? So they're slow and everything like that. So Amazon didn't allow you to get brand registered on Amazon, uh, which brand approval and brand registry are separate, which I'll go over here in a bit too. So don't, don't leave me yet. There's a lot we have to uncover here to make sure uh, we don't mess up anything here, but essentially 
you had to wait a year and a half and spend a lot of money to get brand registered. And it just wasn't worth it to me. It's like, it's like, okay, prove your product first to me in my eyes of how to do this. And then go ahead and get, uh, you know, this trademark and everything like that. Uh, then eventually what happened was it was about two years ago, I would say, um, two years ago, they came up, Amazon came up with a process called the IP accelerator. Okay. So what this was, is it was a program uh, where Amazon had a group of lawyers they they sponsored or there was some deal going on. I'm not sure how it worked, but essentially, if you use these lawyers, you can file a trademark with them. It costs about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. They'd still, you know, it'd still take you know about a year to year and a half to get the trademark. But since Amazon knew these lawyers and what they're doing, you could get brand registered in two to three months. Okay. Still, I was a little hesitant. That's a lot of money, right? If you don't know the product's going to work or not. So it's like, uh, I still was against this a little bit. I was like, ah, we don't need to spend a thousand, fifteen hundred. Again, prove the product works, make sure it's profitable, make sure it's worth investing in it. And then once you see that reinvest in getting brand registered and eventually getting a plus content, unlocking video ads, uh, everything like that. Again, details I'll go over here in a bit of all that, what that means. Um, and then what happened was, Okay, the last year or so, right? So when we got on there, a uh, list of products, we get the 5665 uh, error code. So now what happened uh, is Amazon pretty much made this a lot easier. And what they did is they allowed, I'll just go down the next page here. They allowed pending trademark numbers, okay? So what this means is, and that's terrible, I know, but this says allowed pending trademark numbers. Okay, so what this means, and this is all that's important if you just listen here. What happens is when you file with the USPTO office, they give you a document that says, hey, congratulations, uh, it's now officially pending to get you the trademark number, and they give you a pending number to reference, right? So it's like your application number, essentially. Amazon now allows you to use this in the US, if it's a US trademark, to get brand registered. Okay, so we now could file our brand on Amazon a lot easier. The cool thing is too, we can file the trademark ourselves. So we can file ourselves, okay? So this is where it comes into like, hey, it's it's worth it now and, uh, and everything like that. So $100 to 200, something like that. I forgot the fee, but it's somewhere in that range to do it yourselves, which you, they have videos you can follow uh, on their site, the USPTO, if you just Google that. And then you can also just go to Upwork or Local Lawyer, which these will vary, right? And you can probably get this done within, you know, 300 to $600. Okay, so it's not a thousand, it's not 1500. And you can get brand registered in two to three weeks, okay, instead of two to three months. So you can see the metrics are a lot better uh, right now. And so this is worth it to me. So to go over what you can unlock with this, obviously you get a lot more brand protection because you actually put your brand name in there. You get past Amazon error code 5665. Okay. And you don't have to worry about that. And you can get enhanced brand content or a plus content. Same thing. Again, it just depends. They used to be called enhanced brand content. Now it's called a plus content, which you essentially could just make a web page on your uh, product listing, which boosts conversion. You can list your other products on there. You can have video ads. You can have brand sponsored ads. Again, don't worry about this too much, but it just know uh, it's features you're going to want to have. And what really logged my head around this is because I don't want to sell products on Amazon just for six months anymore. Like, that's just, it's, ex it's exhausting. I tried that method, trying to hit home runs after home runs. No, I want products I can sell a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. So I do the research. I do the work to find that private label product that I want to brand and put on Amazon that I know that I'm going to work and, and build on for years to come. So I suggest if you have that product, if you're not just testing out generic products or anything like that, I suggest you go and do the same. You get your trademark for $300 to $600, you get the pending number and you brand register on Amazon, okay? So breaking this down even further, uh, so I just described brand registry, okay? Which is just like, it's the best version of getting your brand on Amazon, helps with hijackers, all that good stuff. And uh, it's really hard to change if we list it on generic or anything like that uh, in the future. So I suggest doing this right off the gate, okay? Uh, something to note there, get GS1 barcodes, don't get the recycled uh, nationwide barcodes, anything like that. So what Amazon does, uh, Amazon pulls 
these barcodes in the so when you get a gs1 barcode in the database you'll literally type in your brand name for this amazon when you register on amazon they'll ask you for the upc you want to use and then they'll pull that data from gs1 and see if that brand name matches up if not you're gonna have errors you're gonna have issues huge headaches everything like that where nationwide or mania barcode mania they're recycled and so the amazon when they pull from these they'll say other people's brand names because they're recycled. Someone else has used them and it just creates, it creates havoc. Okay. So uh, that's how we get the, the brand registry going. I also want to talk about brand approval. So say you're like, Cameron, forget you. Uh, I just want to get uh, on Amazon without a trademark. I don't care about that right now. I just want to get on Amazon with my brand name. Okay. That's where brand approval comes in. Okay. So actually when you go through the listing process on Amazon now, and you try to put a brand name in there, you're going to get the Amazon uh, 5665 error. Essentially what this is saying is you need brand approval or brand registry. We just went over brand registry. You need a trademark to do it. It's pretty easy to file. Uh, I have videos on that as well uh, on my channel. You can go look at after this, uh, but brand approval, you don't need a trademark, like I just said, and all you need to do is send Amazon photos of your branded packaging. Okay. So if, if you were doing cams, guitars or something like that, or, uh, anything like that, as long as it's cams, guitars on my packaging, and it has to be permanently affixed. So that means it's gotta be printed on there. It's gotta be nice packaging. Uh, it can't be just like a sticker label that's put on there, uh, or a tag or something that could be removed and replaced really easily that you can just put on any box, uh, something like that. So it's gotta be permanently affixed. So what you do is you make a case with them and you reference 5665 error code. Okay. <laughs> the handwriting just is getting worse for the video, but going on. But anyways, reference 5665, make a case. If you make your product listing, they'll literally give you the email to send this to, but sometimes some people you, you want to do it right off the bat here. And then you'll tell them the brand name you need. So brand name. So be, um, uh, BN there uh, for brand name you want to use and put that in quotes there and then send in photos of your packaging with that brand name on it, uh, with, you know, all sides, all sides you include on it, uh, and everything like that. And they'll come back and say, okay, uh, for this category, you are approved, uh, to list your brand under that brand name. Okay. Then it allows you to make that listing and actually get that brand name out there without a trademark. So those are your two options. Okay, guys. So this has been a very hazy subject for a long time, for last year, year and a half. We had the generic debacle, we had the NA debacle, Air 5665. Should we get a trademark? Is it worth it? Uh, everything like that. Just Okay, so now it's starting to clear up a little bit. That's why I wanted to make this video to kind of walk you through it. Uh, hopefully this made things clearer. Hopefully this wasn't just confused you more. If there's anything in this topic that's like still confusing to you, still gray area, let me know in the comments down below because I'll probably be making more videos of this so I can cover those certain topics. Uh, if it was helpful, if this kind of explained things for you and broke it down of what to do, what not to do when it comes to trademarks, barcodes, 5665, listing your brand, brand approval, brand registry, let me know down below. That'd be really helpful. Uh, that way I know this kind of topic or uh, this kind of iPad lesson really helped out and it wasn't just confusing with my terrible handwriting. That'd be really nice. Also guys, uh, make sure you share this video for anybody who needs it. Uh, you know, if you like, comment down below uh, and subscribe. That tells YouTube to send it to other people uh, in the Amazon space that potentially will need this. My goal, because there's just so many little mistakes you can make in Amazon. I don't think Amazon's hard. Just so many little things we gotta get in the right order. If we mess one little thing up, we can lose thousands of dollars. Uh, we can lose six months of time. We can cause massive headaches uh, when it comes to scaling, everything like that. Uh, so uh, my goal is to help you with that. Unfortunately, I've made every single little mistake in the book because I did this by myself like a, like a moron. Uh, so hopefully this helps out. And that's my goal with this channel, of course. But otherwise, guys, I hope this was helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.